Okay, let me go back to the notes. And we're in section five of the notes. Again, for the students that want to, um, you know, I would say move forward. Again, we're trying to encourage that, by the way. And the worst thing you could do is not move forward, stay where you are. And it's going to change your options when you start to learn other things. And again, those uh, options will start to open up when you start to, you know, participate and become more active in your studies. And one thing I'm trying to encourage here is that you, you look at the Sage thing. All right. So again, you can click on this link over here. This will bring you directly to the Sage website, and you could launch a CoCalc worksheet if you want. I'm just going to run it on my computer. I'm going to close this out. But again, you're more than welcome to, to do it here, just like we've been doing in the past. I'm just going to open up a terminal session, and I'm going to type in those commands. Now, certainly, someone said, "Well, I, I really don't want to, you know, understand what I'm typing in." You should make some attempt to understand what you're typing in. All right. So x and y are variables. We've done this many times. Oops. Remember, if you type something in incorrectly, it's not going to blow up. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'll read it to you. And again, I, I already typed that in. Of course, I wrote the notes. So just return. Whoops, I think I made a mistake somewhere. And I think I know where I made a mistake. And it's going to happen to you too. You're going to copy things, and something's not going to copy correctly. I want to point out what didn't copy correctly is the, is the quote marks. So I'm going to put that in again. And I, I just read that quickly. And that's going to happen when you copy paste. And certainly for you guys taking computer science, if you copy paste, it's going to happen to you a lot. You're going to copy paste and all of a sudden, you know, the compiler is going to say, hey, that's not right. All right. Did a good job, right? Let's do the next one. And we'll talk about this one. And I'm going to show you there's going to be another error when I do a copy paste here. Another error. It's the quote marks again. And again, why, someone says, why is that? In my typeset notes, the quotes are different than what Sage wants. So I'm going to, I'm going to type it in. And we'll, we'll read those lines of code to you as well. And again, if you can't remember what you had in, you can certainly read above, but I color, and we'll go back and read it to you. We're trying to encourage you to also read, not just blindly type and hope things work out. Although sometimes that's the only way you can do it. All right, that worked out pretty well. Let's do the next one. And I'm gonna just do this over here. Copy paste. I'm going to go back and read the code to you later. And I'm going to copy paste this one of them, but I'm not going to hit the return button. I want to go back and read the code to you. All right. So let's go through it. it reset. You get X and Y are variables. It says IP1 is now being signed what's called an implicit plot. Uh, implicit plot just simply says that, you know, Y and X are related to each other. And we, we wrote the relationship down. What is Y? It's the square root of X cubed plus one. And we want X to be between these numbers. And we want that to color of the graph to be in red. We want that to be in red. Now, what's the next implicit plot I want? I want X to be equal to Y. That's just a straight line, very simple. And I'm putting it in the same range for X and Y, but I want the line style now to be dashed and I want the color of that to be green. So let's look at the next line. IP3, that's another implicit plot and I'm assigning it and that's a square root. I wanna point out what that is. Well, looking at it, it's identical to this one here, except I'm interchanging X and Y's. What does that mean? It's the inverse of it. And we get the range over here. Now let's go back and we'll graph it out. And it should be a familiar graph, particularly if you're paying attention and doing work. And I'm seeing that. All right, now what am I seeing? I wanna point out what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the dash green line. I was expecting to see that. I'm seeing a curve in red. What curve am I seeing in red? Y equals the square root of X cubed plus one. And I'm seeing a curve in blue. Right, I want to point out where that is. Oh, it's this one over here. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't specify blue on that one. And it's just the default blue. Don't worry about that. And, and then I plotted it out. One, two, three. All right. Red, green. And this one by default plotted out as blue. I should have mentioned that before going through that. All right. So what do we got up there? We got a graph. What am I clearly seeing? I'm clearly seeing an inverse. All right. So I want to do another one. And Someone says, why do you want to do another one? I want to see if I've learned something. All right. So I want to go back in the notes. And yeah, I, I realize it's difficult, but we want to be able to start to think, could we use what we just typed in to do something else? All right. And I want to do this one right over here. All right. 
So let me, um, yeah, it looks kind of crazy, but I'm going to put in implicit plot. I'm going to put it IP, let's call it IP. You know what, I'm going to look at the picture. I'm going to go between minus one and four and let's see minus one and four. Okay, so I'm going to put IP1 is being assigned implicit. Whoops, sorry about that. I typed it wrong. Plot. Remember, I type something incorrect. It's not going to blow up. And what do I want to type in? I want to type this in. All right. Y is being assigned the top, which is one minus the square root of x divide by one plus the square root of x. Okay, and what do I wanna do? Well, I'm gonna do the x between, put this over here, minus one. And again, I'm just trying to learn what I've done. And four, and I want the y to be minus, to from minus one to four. I hit return. Oh, I think I made a mistake and I'm seeing it now. I put down a double equal signs, which is really saying, is it true? Is that equal? And it says it's false. It's true. It's not equal. So let me go back and edit that. That happens to me sometimes. I incorrectly type and return. I got this covered. Now I'm going to do IP2 now equals implicit plot. And I'm going to do x equals, that's a double equal sign, it's an equation, 1 minus the square root of y, I'm doing its inverse, divide by 1 plus the square root. And again, you're going to learn and you're also going to make mistakes. I'm going to copy paste, because I don't feel like typing that in again, right? And you know what, I want to make that a different color. So let's go over here and I'm going to put down uh, color equals, I don't know, let's take a look. I'm going to say red. I think I did okay there. Now remember I did that green line? I'm just going to copy it. All right, I'm find out where that green line is. And I'm looking for it. it's right over here. Whoops, you know what I gotta do? I'm sorry about that. I gotta change the, the range of that to minus one to four. That's the domain, I'm sorry. And the range to minus one to four. I want everything to have the same scale. So they, they sit on top of one another. And the color, oh no, what I'll do is line style equals dashed, made a mistake. Give me a second. And I want the color to be green. Now, again, I can't say this enough times. You're going to make mistakes. We all do. And that's part of learning. And it's frustrating. But you want to do that. And I'm going to hit return now. All right, I think I did pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is that, that plot, remember? Let me do the copy paste. All right, so I'm gonna look at it and I think I might've made a mistake somewhere and I'll tell you why. I'm looking at this picture and that picture and they're just not the same picture. They're not the same picture. All right, so let's take a look, see what I did. Let's go back to my thing and I wanna see if I can figure it out. So did I type it in right, first of all, implicit plot, you know, one minus square root of X divided by one plus square root of X minus one to four and y is minus one to four. Let me see if I did the next one right. X equals one minus the square root of y over one plus the square root of y. X equals, I think I did okay there. Minus one to four, minus one to four. 
And I'm still a little confused here. I don't see my error. Let me see. Oh, I think I see it now. And let's take a look here. Let me just clear because a lot of stuff in the thing in the board. I'm going to go back over it one second at a time. Implicit plot x equals y. Line color. I did that. And let me see if I did this one over x equals 1 minus square root of y, 1 plus square root of y, x and y in red. Let me see if I did IP1. I'm just going back over my code. And I'm not seeing my troubles. I'm seeing that there's three pictures there and one of them is definitely not belonging there. All right, let me go back over that and I'm wondering why that is. So I got to go back over my code again. Right, and this is going to happen to you a lot, especially if you guys in computer science. So IP1, IP2, IP3. Let's do IP1. Is that the correct IP1? Yep, I hit enter. Let me do IP2. Uh, yep, let's do IP3. Let me see. Now I see it. I'm going to do it. IP3 is x equals y. And this happens. And I'm going to do this over here. Copy this. I'm just doing a copy paste now. And I'm going to do the line style. Remember that? Remember I did line style? Okay. And yeah, it's frustrating. I realize that for a lot of students, getting errors is probably the worst thing they're faced with. A lot of times people give up as soon as they get an error. And let's do our plot now, see if we get a better picture. All right, I'm seeing a better picture now. And again, I, I should have made that little dash line green, but I made it red. What am I seeing? I'm seeing the graph I'm seeing over here now. I'm getting a better job. All right, let me go to commercial software. And the reason for that is, I want to point out Sage is difficult. There's no doubt about it. But it, I, professionally, it is being used. People use Sage professionally. So what I want to do is I want to go to commercial software. I'm going to go to a grapher and give me one second. And I'm going to type this in. And what is it going to be? Y equals, well, a fraction, one minus the square root. This is much easier for me to use. And it, it, it certainly costs money, though. I'm not saying it didn't. Most commercial software is going to be pricey. Now this, this is bundled with the operating system, but still I had to pay for the computer to get the operating system. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the, uh, my return thing and I did a pretty good job over there. And I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna put another one in, another function in. And what I'm gonna type in is not y, but x equals fraction one minus the square root. I'm doing the inverse by the way, I'm changing x and y's around. And at the bottom, so I type that in right, one plus the square root of y now. And let's do that. And then I put my dash line in. And that's gonna be y equals x. And I'm gonna just make it a little bit better. All right, what do I mean by that? I'm gonna drag it around. Just give me a second to do so. I'm gonna change that, that dashed, the line that's da uh, not dashed, but I'm gonna make it dashed inspector. I'm going to put a dash line down. And again, I'm not saying this is the application you want to use. You want to find something out there. And by the way, there's tremendous variety. All right, let me do the next one. And I'm going to take this one here and change the color of that. I'll make it, I don't know, cyan. Oh, no, you know what? Make it magenta. And this one over here, just give me a second on that. I don't like that one orange. All right, let me close this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm seeing the picture. I wanna point out these curves can be clearly controlled. 
All right, you can clearly control those curves, including changing the, sign, the size of those curves. What do you mean by the thickness if you really can't see it all that well? All right, but here's the point. Sage is important. It, and the reason for that, it, it allows for a tremendous amount of mathematics. It will bring you through, if you study forward, into graduate level education, mathematics. It's really that extensive. It's used professionally the world over. It's worthwhile learning. If you do transfer energy IT, it also has MATLAB built into it. You'll be able to do all those things that the NGIT students plus more. If you transfer it to another school, it's still going to bode well. It's also free software, meaning you don't have to pay for it. All right. Um, what else? Commercial software can't hurt to have it. If you do have it, that's great. If you want to go on the web, search around for computer algebra systems or graphing software, yada, yada, yada. You'll see a lot of stuff out there. Thank you.